Okay, let's practice some ideas. Uh, the Swedish pop group, ABBA. How many ways can we rearrange letters of the word ABBA? Well, if they're distinct, the answer would be four factorial. However, there's a repeat of the A's, there's two A's repeated, there's two B's repeated, so it must be on the de denominator two factorial, two factorial, bingo, two plus two is four, passes my self check. Great. I've made the word a little bit longer, like uh, uh, b -b 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 uh, like uh, three A's and four B's. How many ways can I rearrange three A's and four B's? The answer would be, uh, what, seven letters in total, of uh, which three of them are labeled A, four of them are labeled B. 7 factorial over 3 factorial or 4 factorial. I could actually work out those numbers if I wish. I just don't choose to do it right now, but maybe you want to do that. Um, well, if I did, say, 3 A's, uh, and say 4 B's, and 6 C's. 3, 4, and 6. How many ways could have rearranged the letters of that word? Ah, b -b -b -k 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 -k. Okay, what's that? That's 13 letters in total, 13 factorial, of which are 3 A's, 4 B's, and 6 C's. That's all 13 letters on the denominator. There's the answer, which I could work out. All right, so we, can, we know how to rearrange letters in words. No worries. Just count how many letters there are. That's the numerator. Factorialize it. And then do the counts of how many letters there are of each type in the denominator, factorialize them, and have that pass, make sure that little self-check is passed. Don't be afraid of writing one factorial all over the place. No problem with that. But what I want to do now is transform this problem into all the standard textbook work that people do on the stuff called permutations and combinations, whose words I'm going to ignore. Uh, for example, let's look at this problem, this word here. Three A's, four B's, and six C's. I'm now going to make the following question, which I'll change to a pink marker. Mean Mr. Muckins at the beginning of the year has 13 students and he's decided to assign grades to those 13 students before he's even met them. He's going to call three kids A students, four kids B students, and six kids C students. Doesn't know what work they do, at the end of the year he's going to get those grades. That's it. That's just how he is. So, how many ways could he assign three A's, four B's, and six C's to 13 students? Alright, that's the question. Well, how can I think about this? Well, to me, it really is a word problem, because imagine those 13 students were lined up, or maybe this is the list on his roster sheet, and here's his list of students. At the beginning of the year, before he's even met the kids, he's going to say, OK, three of you are going to randomly choose to be A. You're an A student, you're an A student, you're an A student. Four of them are going to be B students. B, 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 and B, and the remaining six of you are going to be C students. That's it. There's one way I can assign three A's, four B's, six C's. But I can go through all the possible ways by just listing pictures like this. But what are these pictures? They're all the ways to rearrange the word containing three A's, four B's, and six C's. Actually, answering the mean Mr. Muckin's grading distribution problem is just a word counting problem, to which the answer must be 13 factorial over four, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, 6 factorial. That's it. In fact, all these counting problems are just word rearranging problems. For example, here's a classic problem. Won't be very inspired, but suppose there are, say, 10 people in an office, four are needed for a committee. How many ways could we make that happen? Well, let's line up all 10 people. And what are we going to do? Well, four people are going to be labeled, oh, excuse me, on the committee on, you're on, you're on, and you're on. And the remaining six people will be labelled lucky. They don't get to do the work on the committee, but I want to be one of those six. All right, so that's it. There's one possible answer to the problem of choosing four people for a committee. It's basically a labelling, it's just basically a word problem. I've got a ten-letter word consisting of four O's and six L's. How many ways to go rearrange the letters of those, that word? Well, each, uh, each arrangement is an answer to the problem. So the number of arrangements is ten factorial, 10 words, uh, 10 letters, excuse me, 4 factorial, 6 factorial, bingo. There's the answer to the committee problem. It's just a word rearrangement problem in the end. This is all brilliant. This is all grand. In fact, it speaks to what I call the general labeling principle. So let me clean some space, make it very smudgy. Here is the grand unified principle which makes everything ridiculously easy. I call it the labeling principle. 
It's written out in full detail below this video. Scroll down and see all the text. And then off we go. It says as following. Suppose there are n objects. They're all distinct. You can line them up and you can tell them apart, like n people or something. If a of them are to be given label 1 and b of them are to be given label 2 and c of them to be given label 3, the labels could be like on the committee, off the committee, chosen, not chosen, um, grade A, grade B, grade C, grade F. What the labels are, the number of ways to assign labels is just a word counting problem. There'll be n letters, so you have n factorial on the top, and all the ones labeled the first way, a factorial, all the ones labeled the second way, b factorial, all the ones labeled the third way, c factorial, and so on. So that's it. The number of ways to solve a labeling problem is n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. What I mean by that is that's the number of distinct objects, and these are the counts of all the labels. And as a self-check, all those counts below should add up to the number n on the top if you remove the factorials. So don't be ashamed of writing one factorials, or even zero factorials for that. That's it. Everything is just a labeling principle. It's just once you've got labels, it's really just a word rearranging problem to which the answer is this. That's it. That's the course basically done. We're finished. So the question is now to apply this and practice using it. I guess it's the remainder of the course. But that's it. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's natural. It's easy. It's just rearranging words. Oh, love it.